Hi, everyone. I'd like to welcome everyone to the soft launch uh, and the implementation meeting uh, for the SEI strategy for Alberta. My name is Bean Gill, and uh, I have a spinal cord injury. I've had it for almost nine years, and I'm really uh, honored to be able to chair this meeting today. I'd like to start off by respectfully acknowledge acknowledging that I am located on Treaty 6 territory, a traditional gathering place for diverse indigenous, pe indigenous peoples, uh, such as the Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakota Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Ojibwe, Soto, Anishinaabe, Inuit, and many others whose histories, languages, and cultures continue to influence our vibrant community. We acknowledge all the many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries and encourage everyone to take a moment to acknowledge, acknowledge the land on which they are currently living. So today we're gonna to be starting off with an overview of our agenda. So we're gonna have an introduction to the strategy. Um, we'll have two breakout discussions with a short break in between the two um, that will be used to inform the action and implement, implementation plan for the strategy. And then we'll have closing remarks. And then the Air Meet Social Lounge will remain open for another hour for anybody who wants to mingle and network. I know I've really been missing networking since COVID happened. Um, so getting familiar with Air Meet, um, I'll start by asking some icebreaker questions. And then on the bottom of your screen, you should see six buttons. Uh, the third one being a smiley face. And if you can answer the questions by using a different emoji, uh, that'd be great. So um, if you're joining as a person with, live, with um, if you are a person who is living with or has a close friend or family member with a spinal cord injury, send us an emoji. Awesome. I like that they go up. Okay, if you're joining from healthcare, send us, uh, let's see who, is here from healthcare. One, oh, oh, there we go. Lots, can't count those. <laughs> awesome. Do we have any researchers in the house? Oh, oh, wow, lots of researchers. Okay, cool, cool. Any government or policy makers? Wow, that's a lot of researchers. Awesome. Cool, all right, all right. How about anybody from a community group? I guess that would be me. <laughs> And then anyone from urban Alberta? I know there's a few of you guys here. Oh yeah, lots, awesome. And then rural Alberta. I know there's more people with spinal cord injuries living rurally than there are urbanly, or uh, urbanly is not a word. <laughs> awesome, and there, is there anyone here from outside of Alberta? Nope. Oh. Yeah, we got a couple. Okay, awesome. Well, I just want to acknowledge the diversity in this group, in this room here today. Um, it does take a lot of people in order to create something like this and to implement it and for it to be successful. And, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, benefits that is going to come from this strategy that I know I'm really excited about. Okay, and then so going back to Air Meet, if you have any questions at any point, um, you can use the question and answer tab on the right hand side. Um, if you like the question that somebody else asked, you can go ahead and upvote that. So there's a little square that says upvote. Um, and then that'll let our, our moderators know which questions are popular and which ones we should ask in case there are a lot that we can't get to all of them. Um, when a speaker session like this starts, a yellow banner will appear and you will automatically be pulled into the presentation. And then after presentations, you'll be automatically moved to the social lounge where we'll be hosting the breakout discussions. Um, for optimal experience, please use Google Chrome and view from a laptop or a desktop. I tried from my phone yesterday and it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, to troubleshoot, um, first try refreshing your browser and switch to a lower resolution. So on your screen here as well, um, it's a little, box here that says HD with a down arrow. So you can click on that and go to low definition and then that should um, increase the quality of your experience here. 
And then if you have any other concerns, you can email abneuro at ucalgary.ca. It will also appear in the chat if you um, need to reach out if you have any other technical issues. Um, and then for the discussion groups, uh, to take part in the breakout discussions, you will need to choose a virtual table to sit at by clicking take a seat below each table. So these tables are in the virtual social lounge, which will be automatically put once this session ends. And then each table has a unique discussion topic. Um, a list of the discussion topics can be found in the event emails you received and also as a message uh, pinned in the chat box. So the chat box is just on the right side here as well, um, right next to the Q&A, it says chat, so you can just click on that. Uh, each discussion has been labeled with a letter. For example, A is for the topic connecting community, healthcare and research. Uh, to be a part of this discussion, please sit at the table with the label A. There are a maximum of only six, uh, six seats at each table. If you are unable to get a seat at the table of your first choice, uh, I encourage you to find another table discussion to participate in. If all the tables are full when the sessions begin, join an unfacilitated table or general networking um, table and see how many new people you can meet. These tables will not have a label on them, uh, so you can just go ahead and sit there and um, make some new friends. Here, we all have the same shared interest of how we can improve the lives of Albertans living with spinal cord injury. And I encourage you to share your thoughts with others at these tables. So everyone is here for a reason and know that your opinion matters and it has value, which is why you're here. And so let's take uh, advantage of this opportunity to network and um, really share your thoughts and your ideas because they are definitely welcome. We also have a Twitter account, so if you are on Twitter, you can live tweet with us here. Um, this Twitter account for the strategy is at SCI Strategy AB, and I think somebody might put it in the chat here. Um, you can feel free to post throughout the event and then hashtag, uh, use hashtag SCI Strategy AB. And then lastly, before we get started, I'd like to thank all of the supporters, collaborators, and others who made this event possible. You did an amazing job, um, and this should be a really informative and fun discussion that we're about to have. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my story and how this strategy would have made my transition easier um, for me, and then we're gonna go into the strategy introduction. And don't worry, I'm only gonna talk for a couple minutes. <laughs> I could talk for hours, but I'll just talk for a couple minutes. <laughs> I think a lot of you guys already know my story, but I'll tell you anyways. <laughs> um, so I, like I said, it's been almost nine years. So on July 13th next month, it'll be nine years that I was paralyzed. I was in Las Vegas when it happened and it was on Friday the 13th, which uh, is now a good luck day for me. And um, I basically had really sharp pain in my low back and then wasn't able to move my right leg. I was moving my left leg around and then about a minute or so label later, I wasn't able to move my left leg either. Um, basically, I was left paralyzed within 10 minutes uh, with no, no warning or anything. I am diagnosed with uh, transverse myelitis and so there was inflammation in my spinal cord. Um, yeah, and so I actually fell through the cracks of the medical system because I was paralyzed in Vegas. And because I actually left there with a misdiagnosis, um, because when I was there, all of my diagnostic imaging came back as normal, all of my blood work, all of my tests came back normal. Um, so they couldn't really find a physical cause for my paralysis. So they told me I had conversion disorder, which is where you're so stressed out that your brain tells your body to shut down. And 2012 was, and I hope remains, the worst year of my life. Um, that year, I left my ex-husband after a violent interaction. Um, three months after that, my dad left our family. Two weeks later, I was paralyzed. And so it was a rough year, um, and, but I've definitely learned a lot since then. And I'm definitely a way different person now than I was then. Um, and I just have such a gratitude to be alive uh, for the mobility and ability that I do have. I'm very grateful for and um, I have a big priority on health and fun. So 
a lot of that has changed, but had this strategy been implemented nine years ago, I don't think I would have fallen through the cracks. So what happened was when I came back to Canada, they told me that I need to go to the doctor emergency room and tell them that I have conversion disorder. So I did. And I waited in this psychiatric room, which makes you feel awesome. And, um, you know, a, a ER doctor came to see me and then I waited four or five hours for a psychiatrist. When the psychiatrist came, I told him everything that had happened. And at the end of that conversation, he told me that most people that this happens to have a large monetary gain coming towards them and asked me if I did too. I was quite offended by that comment because I actually couldn't work. And so I was losing money, um, not gaining any by any means. And so I went home that night um, and they basically told me, okay, well, go find a community psychologist or something. He's like, I'm not admitting you because there's nothing wrong with you. But I couldn't move. I couldn't move half my body, lost all bowel, lost all bladder function. And so clearly something was wrong. So then I went home and then on my own, I found a, uh, I found a psychologist, I started doing physio and I was an x-ray tech before I was paralyzed. And so I know how the healthcare system works. I tried to use all my resources to make sure that I got out of Vegas in a timely manner and that I had somebody here to take me on as a patient, but nobody did. And I actually didn't get to the Glenrose until February the next year. So seven months later, was when I got to the Glenrose and I had a Foley catheter for that whole time um, and just lots of things. I didn't even know about a bowel routine. I had to figure that out on my own. Um, I didn't know about intermittent cathing. Um, you know, all of these things I didn't know, but I just used my fitness background and my background. I was also a healthcare aide before I became an x-ray tech. So that came in handy when transferring and showering and daily activities were, you know, when I had to relearn that basically by myself. So had this strategy been in place when I was paralyzed, I don't think any of that would have happened. I think I would have got to the Glenrose a lot faster. I would have been taught intermittent cathing. My spasticity would have been addressed a lot faster as well. Um, and I just feel like I could have avoided a lot of the hurdles and the obstacles and the speed bumps that came in my way had something like this been in place. And myself as a healthcare provider, if I fell through the cracks, there's guaranteed hundreds, if not thousands of other people that are also falling through the cracks. So that's why this strategy is very important. That's why your, your opinion is quite important. That's why having these meetings and having uh, active participation in these meetings is really important. So that not for myself, but all of the other people that are coming behind me with spinal cord injuries, so that they're treated with dignity, they're treated with respect. We can get rid of the doom and gloom when spinal cord injury and brain injury patients come into the hospital, right? We need to focus on compassion. Um, we're all human beings and we all have feelings and it doesn't matter how severe your injury is, you still deserve compassion and empathy. And so um, these are some of the changes that I'm hoping to see. And I know a lot of you guys want to see the same changes as well um, because it'll just Honestly, it'll lower the suicide rate. It will actually make a big impact in people's quality of life and people will have hope and they will want to live. And that's the biggest thing after a devastating injury such as a spinal cord injury is it's hard to want to live. And we already live in a place where there's so many attitudinal barriers. There's physical barriers where you feel like you're living in a place that isn't designed for you. You're not welcome here. And so if we can just change our attitudes and if we can start that at the very acute care setting, I think that's going to have a very big impact on many, many people's lives. And now how we're going to make that impact is this strategy. So I would like to introduce Jennifer, or, sorry, Jennifer Dotchin from Campus Alberta Neuroscience. She is the executive director of Campus Alberta Neuroscience and brings over two decades of program, project, and strategic management experience at local, regulatory, provincial, and national levels spanning four continents. Wow, Jennifer, you are an impressive lady. Take it away. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much, Bean, for that story. I am hoping that you can see my screen. Can I get like a, I don't know, a thumbs up or something? 
Anybody see my screen? Yeah, you can? Yep. Great. Uh, but can you actually see my presentation? Yes, we can? Lovely. <laughs> thank you. Uh, technology. Um, so thank you so much for that introduction. I'm so pleased to be able to present to you the spinal cord injury for Alberta. It's in Alberta first, and it is, um, you know, as you just heard, something that is really uh, needed within the province. This uh, has been a journey for many people. Uh, it was initiated in 2016. The strategy was created by over 70 passionate people and organizations. You could check out page 24 to 26 um, for all the representatives from spinal cord injury stakeholder groups, uh, spanning community, healthcare, academia, government partners who are all involved in the development of the spinal cord injury strategy. Recognizing that strategy engagement, engagement was a key component in 2018, we took the strategy and developed a comprehensive strategy to ensure that it represented the voice of the community. And we made adjustments. And then we repeated that until where it is today. So you should have received a copy of the strategy already, but should you need another reference, um, we'll have the link in the, um, to the strategy uh, in the comment box, as well as the summary. I wanna say thank you to all of you who added your voice already to the strategy through the involvement of committee membership, one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews, focus groups and surveys, and those of you who provided your advice, research, ideas, and guidance uh, throughout the development of it. Of course, I cannot miss the Campus Alberta Neuroscience Spinal Cord Injury Partner Committee who championed this endeavor and spent countless of hours working on it. I would like to give a special thank you as well to the Alberta Paraplegic Foundation that provided support to both bringing the strategy to life and also supporting its implementation. So today's event furthers all of these endeavors for providing you with the ability to shape and be a part of implementing the strategy, because these recommendations, as we just heard, need action. The strategy came about to tackle uh, a few challenges, gaps in research, care, communication, and resources, as well as the lifelong physical, mental, social, and economic challenges. The aim is that by collaboratively tackling these gaps and challenges with a diverse network of partners, there will be an improved quality of life for those affected by spinal cord injury. The next few slides are foundational to our discussion in our cafe roundtables. So I'm gonna take some time to read them out to you because they're so important. So the vision of the spinal cord injury strategy for Alberta is to improve the quality of life for those living with spinal cord injuries in Alberta. The mission is to provide an inclusive person-centered strategy that supports evidence-based practices and services to improve the lives of Albertans living with spinal cord injuries, integrating knowledge and expertise for greater community, healthcare and research capacity province-wide. The values are equitable and respectful inclusion of all support systems with acknowledgement of the diversity between and within each system. Also cultivating discovery and curiosity for innovation and empowering cross-sector collaborations. This visual here, I could probably have a 30 minute discussion, but I'm gonna try and keep it brief. The goals are made up of three areas. Strengthen the spinal cord injury network to support a holistic approach to daily living and create an improved health experience. And in order to accomplish these goals, three priorities of capacity, you know, building research services and care capacity, knowledge, collaboratively generating um, and applying and translating the best information and integration across sectors to achieve and improve outcomes are the pillars where all of the recommendations are embedded. And of course, the person with the lived experience is right there in the center. On the next few slides, I'm going to highlight the recommendations embedded within the strategy, which you will find on page 14 and on. So two months ago, we launched a survey to begin the prioritization and implementation planning of the strategy. This led to the 18 recommendations being placed into three categories, short, medium, and long-term recommendations. 
So I'm going to give you the recommendations over those categories. Um, so within the short term, so that's within the year. Um, the first is, of course, establishing leadership of the strategy, identifying gaps in resources and services, uh, research and practice, defining what data is required and how best to use it, connecting community healthcare and research activities and expertise, developing a framework that is led by and in partnership with Indigenous people to address specific needs are all important first steps noted by our survey, our survey respondents. I should mention that 81 people were able to respond to that survey. In our medium term, again, we saw supporting partnerships across sectors, securing funding and resources to support the strategy, developing a support structure to aid Albertans living with spinal cord injury uh, during emergencies, uh, supporting data collection and using that data um, and live experience to inform community health care and research initiatives. Uh, we have translational engagement with other stakeholders and development of educational materials were all placed in that medium term, which is one to two years. And in our longer term, we have the, um, these four. So adjust the strategy over the long term. We want the strategy to be a living document. We want it to adjust and expand and grow um, as we make improvements. Um, we want to host an annual event, develop evaluation mechanisms, and support preclinical and clinical research to increase understanding of the impact of injuries and develop novel innovations. So I know I have flown through each one of these, but I promise you will be able to connect and discuss these recommendations and how to bring them to fruition in our discussion in a few moments. So where do we go from here? We have these recommendations. We now have the strategy. So some of our next steps are to establish leadership for governance, accountability, and that advocacy, which is very important. We need um, an action and implementation plan. And that's where you come in to help uh, bring together what, what are the, the best steps, who needs to be involved and bring us that great advice to move this forward and how we can do that collaboratively. And finally, uh, the need for an evaluation framework to ensure that we are benchmarking, that we are making progress, that we can show uh, that, this is, um, that this is working and that where we need to grow next. So I cannot say this enough, but thank you so much for being here for sharing your voice, sharing your ideas, for all of the collaborators and all of the supporters um, helping to realize this strategy. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jennifer, you did a great job of presenting the strategy to us and thank you for all that you do. Um, next, I'd like to introduce Dr. Rebecca Charbonneau. She is a clinical assistant professor in the Division of Clinical Neurosciences at the University of Calgary. She is also the medical lead for spinal cord injury at the Foothills Medical, medical Center in Calgary. Uh, so here you go. Take it away, Rebecca. Thanks, Bean. So I was asked to discuss um, my perspective of the strategy from a clinical viewpoint. Um, so this strategy provides a great opportunity for stakeholders to come together to address the complex issues associated with healthcare after spinal cord injuries. From a clinical perspective, I'm excited to be working with persons with SCI and their families, identifying and prioritizing care needs. These priorities can then help to inform researchers where they may want to focus their efforts to ensure care practices and pathways are evidence-based, uh, with the ultimate goal being to improve the lives of those with SCI. It is through the strategy's collaborative approach that the delivery of care following SCI will be supported by strong literature and implemented across the province. A prime example of collaboration that we've been involved with is the Concentric Project, and um, Dr. Ho will continue the discussion around Concentric.
Awesome. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Ho. So Dr. Chester Ho is a professor and division director of physical medicine and rehabilitation, endowed chair of spinal cord injury research at the U of University of Alberta, and the senior medical director for the neurosciences, rehabilitation, and vision strategic clinical network. That's a lot of titles, Dr. Ho. Congratulations, <laughs> and go ahead. <laughs> Thanks, Bean, and thanks, Rebecca. And so Rebecca mentioned that um, we have been working on the concentric project together. And in fact, many of us on this call today are involved with the concentric call today are involved with the concentric project. And for those of you who are not familiar with it, basically it's a project that aims to improve the transition experience of people with spinal cord injury from rehab back to the community. The point is that that project really involves the community, clinicians and researcher, and also requires a network that connects people together in Alberta. And those are the exact same things that this strategy is trying to achieve. So um, to me, um, this strategy is incredibly important and is critical to um, the success of the uh, you know, uh, transition of people from the hospital back to the community and overall to improve the quality of life and which is um, the, um, you know, the primary goal of this uh, project and for this strategy. So um, I'm really grateful that um, it is happening. So thank you so much. Thanks, Dr. Ho. Um, next, I'd like to introduce Dr. Vivian Mushuar. Um, and Dr. Patrick Whalen from the University of Alberta and Calgary, respectively. Um, Dr. Mushwar is a professor in the Division of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation at the University of Alberta. And Dr. Whalen is currently a member of the Department of Comparative Biology and Experimental Medicine, Department of Physiology and Pharmacology, and the Department of Clinical Neurosciences at the University of Calgary. He holds the Frank LeBlanc Chair in Spinal Cord Injury Research. Um, sorry, he also holds the Frank LeBlanc Chair in Spinal Cord Injury Research. Uh, so welcome, and we can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you, Bean. Um, it's really a great pleasure to be joining uh, everyone today. I just uh, would like to quickly uh, thank and congratulate everyone who's worked on the Alberta Spinal Cord Injury Strategy for over the past five years for getting us to the point where uh, it is today. And I truly enjoyed the incredible camaraderie and, and the keen dedication and interest that everyone involved has shown. So uh, I was asked to um, uh, talk about uh, what I see as the main way the strategy will impact research in Alberta. And from my perspective, this strategy allows perhaps for the first time in the province for a convergence of research healthcare and community living with their spinal cord injury. And in my opinion, the most critical component is the removal of walls and barriers between these entities and the appreciation that research, healthcare and community living are really all an integrated continuum. And that all aspects of research from foundational to translational will impact healthcare as well as living with spinal cord injury in the community. So. I see that with them, uh, this strategy, we are able to see that research really is a pipeline, pipeline that feeds healthcare with um, new treatments for spinal cord injury and feeds community living with reduced barriers and improved uh, access. So, so to me, by integrating research closely with healthcare and community living, brand new avenues of research will open up and have actually started um, uh, opening up. So this strategy is really setting up um, a, a, a province-wide uh, partnership with regards to spinal cord injury that has not been experienced in the past. And I see that by working together to tackle real world needs and creating real world solutions for Albertans living uh, with spinal cord injury through research that is anchored in fundamental science, clinical practice, and everyday life, we will be able to make leaps in meeting the needs of persons living with spinal cord injury, enhancing their abilities and empowering them to achieve any activity of interest to them. 
Um, so, so to me, achieving this allows researchers to really feel and, 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 uh, and be satisfied uh, that um, uh, their work is making a difference in people's life. It allows healthcare providers to achieve a higher level of satisfaction in delivering the best and the most up-to-date care for their clients with spinal cord injury. And I, I see persons experiencing spinal cord injury as um, having barriers that they currently experience in their daily life removed, uh, improving their quality of life altogether. So in a nutshell, this is uh, what I see the strategy achieving and how research will be a very strong anchor partner in this endeavor. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Bean, and I'd just like to uh, likewise congratulate everybody uh, on the strategy. It's it's been it's been quite a ride, a fantastic experience, and um, I too have enjoyed it. And um, you know, I've been I've been a, an Alberta-based research since 1991. Um, I don't like thinking how many years it's been, but it's been a few. And when I started graduate school at the University of Alberta, um, when I was doing experiments, they were relatively simple affairs. Now, uh, granted, I didn't think they were simple at the time, but nowadays things have really progressed and we have multiple tools that we can use that can allow us to ask really exciting questions and ultimately really drive the development of new therapeutics. But an experiment, it may need the help these days of a physicist, a computer scientist, a geneticist, engineer, clinicians, and our community um, to develop and interpret. So they're much more complicated. And really, this is one of the goals of the strategy, to bring diverse minds together to solve these complex problems. So we can bring together experts, say, in machine learning from Edmonton, spinal cord researchers from the U of A and Calgary, behavioral neuroscientists from Lethbridge to together solve these problems. And over the years, Really, I've had a, a great opportunity to have people living with spinal cord injury help us think about the right areas that we should be focusing on as researchers. And uh, I think that's one of the great things about it, the strategy is that it will bring more people from the community um, together with scientists and clinicians to start to think carefully about what really matters in terms of solutions. So for me, the strategy will allow me to work more closely with my colleagues across the province to apply my preclinical findings into practice. And we're already doing this locally through the Re Restore Network in Calgary, where we work to understand clinical questions and develop new engineering solutions that can be used in practice to develop precision rehab methods. And personally, working with people with diverse expertise is truly rewarding. And the thing is, we also have outstanding colleagues in spinal cord injury across the province, and many of who are with us today. And the strategy provides a framework to allow us all to share ideas and collaborate and accelerate the development of therapeutics. And um, as I mentioned before, another area which is really exciting is it will allow us to engage uh, with people with spinal uh, cord injuries to enhance integrated knowledge translation. So research has learned a tremendous amount from our community um, and we, we're incredibly excited by the promise of an integrated approach to work on spinal cord injury in Alberta. So thank you. Well, thank you both very much for all of the work and research you guys do. Like you said, research is really important. It is what feeds the medical system with the you know best practices and newest um, technology and uh, therapies out there. So um, it's really a really important job that you guys are doing as well. Um, okay, now we're going to talk to two of my homies, two of my really awesome peeps, Brandis and Rob. So uh, Rob McIsaac. After sustaining a spinal cord injury in a motor vehicle accident in 2004 at the age of 18, Rob became heavily involved in peer mentoring through the Canadian Paraplegic Association in Nova Scotia. Influenced by his years of volunteering and peer work, he chose to pursue a career in social work. 
Rob joined our team in 2019, shortly after graduating from the McEwen University with a social work diploma. Welcome, Rob. And Brandis, so Brandis, in 2005, at the age of 21, Brandis sustained a C5 Asia C spinal cord injury from a motor vehicle accident. As both a registered social worker and a spinal cord injury survivor, Brandis aims to support and enrich the lives of individuals with disabilities so they can have the chance to achieve their goals and build the resilience required for a positive lifestyle. All right, guys, take it away. Awesome, Bean. Thank you for the introduction. Um, and thank you guys for having us today. Uh, so I, I was asked to speak on the, my perspective of how the strategy will um, impact communities. Um, and for me, from my perspective, the strategy, you know, will provide essential knowledge and networking for, co for communities in order to access resources. And for that, allow them to create more inclusive spaces as well as inclusive programming. Um, this could include removing physical barriers or pro providing uh, general public awareness on inclusivity. Um, in turn, you know, having communities provide more inclusive spa inclusiveness, um, spaces or programming can empower individuals with, with spinal cord injuries to, you know, the biggest part is to take up a more active role in their respective communities. So become a more active participant in uh, whatever programming it is, right? So that they can have access to those spaces. And you know, one thing, big thing to look at is inclusive communities really encourage independence. And most people with spinal cord injuries really strive to achieve their independence. Um, and with that, making a bigger integration for people with disabilities enriches community dynamics as well. So that that is solely from my perspective and Brandis. Thanks, Rob. Um, I was asked to be here today because I'm apparently a, a wheelchair champion. So I take that honor very seriously. But uh, I've been asked to answer the question um, of what kind of impact someone in the community can make. And um, what I'd like to say is uh, um, people with disabilities, they really want to see changes, but sometimes they don't know where to start or they even feel like they aren't heard or can they make a difference? And I feel like the SCI strategy um, in collaboration with all the other uh, pillars is really going to help them to be able to do this um, and really to advocate. So, you know, when I hear people's experience, I say to them, you know, you may not be able to change what happened to you or your experience in the system, but really you can use your voice to help change it for the future, for other people, for new injuries, for new people transitioning into the community. Um, my personal experience in the community with lived experience and also working with individuals with spinal cord injuries, what I've seen in the last 16 years since um, I had my injury, it, it's uh, really policies and procedures haven't changed that much. Um, and there really is a need for improvement with some of them. Um, and so this strategy and this collaboration can possibly really help to uh, revise some of those policies and procedures to make it better uh, for individuals with spinal cord injuries. Um, when I was interviewed uh, during the um, SCI strategy process, I found like my voice was really heard and that the person that was interviewing me was actually surprised by a lot of the things that I was saying. Um, so with that, I just want to say, you know, we can't change what we don't know. So if people in the community can really use their voice along with this strategy, I think that they're going to be able to make a big impact and it's going to be really valuable. Wow, perfectly said, guys. I totally agree with everything that you said. That's accurate. Um, okay, we're doing really good for time. That's awesome. Uh, we're going to go to the question period now. So we'll see if we have any questions here. Okay, so how can someone or an organization become involved in the strategy? 
who wants to answer? You can just unmute yourself and answer. Uh, sorry, Bean, can you repeat the question? Where, where can we see the questions? Oh, there we go. Sorry. Under Q&A, yeah, it's yeah. how can someone or an organization become involved in the strategy? I guess they need to just put their hand up and, and, uh, and express interest. Uh, it's really been an uh, open door strategy. Of course, uh, Jennifer can talk more about that uh, uh, since she's uh, been leading uh, the effort. But from my experience, it's been an open door strategy and, and, uh, and anyone interested uh, really would love to have them on board. And, um, and to increase, uh, to, to, um, uh, you know, to expand the group, expand the discussions, expand the experiences and, and skills. Um, like this is this is just a beautiful coming together, um, and um, and we would love to uh, see as many people as possible involved. One hundred percent, Vivian. I absolutely agree with you. Um, one of the things that I would definitely recommend is that uh, once our Q and A is completed, we'll be moving to the discussion tables. And at your discussion table, put your hand up. If there's something that you really want to see a change in and that you have some ideas as to how to make that happen, make sure that they are they're taken down. There'll be note takers and a facilitator and have a discussion as to how to move it forward. Uh, the strategy is really segmented into a variety of different areas. So there's policy changes, there's clinical changes, there is elements for research. And so we do hope that everyone can see a way um, to see themselves in that strategy and be able to support it. Awesome. And then we have another question here that states from each of your perspectives, what do you think could be the biggest impact of the strategy in Alberta? So Dr. Ho? Sure, I'll take it. Yep, thanks, Bean. Um, I think that basically from my standpoint as a clinician, right, let's say um, between clinicians in different parts of Alberta, if we could work together to standardize our care so that wherever you are in Alberta, you get the same care for spinal cord injury, that would be my dream. And then between clinicians and the community partners, if we could work together to actually work on advocacy, work on policy changes together with our policymakers. I think that would be wonderful. And between clinicians and uh, researchers, if we could actually integrate some of the research innovations in Alberta. By the way, Alberta has some of the best SEI researchers in North America and the world, but we have lots of opportunities to really integrate all of that into healthcare. I would love to see that as a major impact. Thank you. Yeah, great answer. You know, I completely agree with Chester. It's just, um, you know, this strategy gets me so excited about the, um, you know, about about uh, throwing away barriers, right? We, um, and, and really allowing um, uh, research, healthcare, and, and, you know, and community together to, uh, community living to come together in such a way that the whole province is truly back to being a living lab where we, um, you know, we, we go for things, we, we try out new strategies and, you know, and, and we get uh, the opinions of all stakeholders taken into consideration as we move forward. So this is an opportunity and, and that's why I get so excited about this strategy. And you know, many times for uh, myself as a researcher, um, you're, you're, I think the concept is that you're thinking of things that you're going to do in the laboratory. But a really exciting direction is when clinicians come to us and say, you know what, this just happens to work. Um, can you find out how it works? And that's in a really exciting direction because uh, ideally we can find the ways in the mechanisms uh, whereby it does work and provide new tools. So I think that's a that's a, a way in which the strategy can help that and accelerate that. Awesome. Anybody else? Um, within the strategy, oh, there's okay. a section that 
talks about um, connecting people to community resources and working to with spinal cord injury as well um, as having lived experience myself. I think that this is a very, very important part of the strategy because there's so many people that slip through the cracks after they've been injured or after they've been in the hospital system. So um, I'm really pleased that that's in the strategy and I really think that that can make a difference as well. Rob? I was going to echo actually what Brandis had, had said as well. And, and to include, to attach onto that would be the impact that it's going to have potentially in communities. Um, because we know expanding beyond a uh, more metro area, like a bigger city center, um, there there's accessibility issues, right? Fit those physical barriers. But if you go beyond that to more rural settings where individuals uh, are transitioned back to, they face or encounter a lot more barriers than most individuals. So, you know, with the strategy moving forward, hopefully give them that uh, the necessary tools to be able to implement in their communities to create, again, that inclusive area. So. Yeah, awesome. I agree with that too. Um, Jennifer, I'll direct this question to you. It says, in this strategy, a person, can a person from a foreign country take part? Absolutely. Um, in fact, we'll be actually um, creating a little bit of a coalition of the will. A coalition of the willing. We'll be sending out a Google form, so we'll be able to create a network of those people who are willing to help to implement the strategy. Um, as well, um, we'll also be looking at lessons learned, and this is something that if there is one from, I'm not too sure, uh, Jason, where you are from, but if you have one, definitely send us. Um, it along and ways that we can implement this. We are um, definitely willing to try some things out. Awesome, I love that. Um, okay, and so then on the flip side of what the benefits of this um, strategy is, uh, Nick is asking, what are some of the biggest barriers that this strategy faces? Anybody you wanna answer? You know, being before the pandemic, I thought that one of the biggest strategies is um, how big the province is and how difficult it is to reach out. And I think the pandemic taught us that uh, there are ways to reach out. And and over the last, uh, I would say, um, a year to year and a half, tele-rehabilitation has expanded um, in very meaningful ways. So, uh, so, so I think... I think um, a distance is, is still a barrier, but it's becoming a little bit less. But what is needed is a concerted effort, right? There, there, and there needs to be a concerted effort, obviously some sort of um, central funding that, that um, allows for the operationalization of the strategy and, and uh, really reaching out. And, um, and, and in the end is the will, is the will to make a difference. From you know, from um, um, policymakers to um, uh, to healthcare um, personnel to researchers to people living in the community with spinal cord injury. So, so there's certainly it's not you know it's not all going to be easy. But I think there are uh, I think there are ways that we can get things going. And I think we need to start focusing more on telerehabilitation and really reaching out to all the far corners of the province. I think I'll also want to answer this because I think that one big barrier is that um, sometimes it's perceived that spinal cord injury only affects a few people. And so, you know, there are only 5,200 people in Alberta with spinal cord injury. But guess what? It's a smaller number, surely. It's smaller than people with diabetes, with heart attack, etc. But the impact on people with spinal cord injury is tremendous. We have to recognize it. And also, if we look at the healthcare system impact, right? If we look at the amount of resources spent on, you know, providing uh, care for spinal, people with spinal cord injury, it's actually even more expensive than uh, providing care for people with stroke and, and other conditions. 
But these things are not widely recognized. So we have to get the information out there and also help the system and people understand that it's not just a sheer number of people who are affected that matters. It's actually their quality of life and how um, affected they are that really matters. Yeah, excellent points made. Um, so we do have some more questions, but unfortunately we don't have time to get to them all. Uh, they will be saved and we'll try to address them in a post-event email. Um, so we are going to go into our breakout sessions now, and I think we'll just automatically somehow end up in the lounge, right? Tech support. 